Did you guys know there's a level below rock bottom? Yeah, there are several in fact. And they're called the Human Centipede First Sequence, the Human Centipede 2 Full Sequence, and the Human Centipede 3 Final Sequence. And I watched all three films in the span of about 8 hours at 4am on a fateful, fateful Friday to Saturday marathon run. What you are seeing right now on screen, viewers, is little old me reacting to the last 24 minutes of Human Centipede 2 at about 1.5 times the speed, because I'm not a twisted degenerate who revels in the experience of watching gory horror films oversaturated with violence, gore, shit. <laughs> You're probably wondering right now, uh, why on earth a respectable member of society, such as myself, would subject themselves to a marathon of such debauchery? Well, because a few months ago, I and my co-host for Two Girls, One Stream, Some Dumb American, put out a bounty. For $300, we would watch the first two films, and for $350, all three. And then we would react to them, like a, on a Saturday special edition of TGOS. To our surprise and utter chagrin, that bounty was fulfilled, and you can certainly go and watch that review, I'll link it here down in the description. But consider this the Sparknotes version, uh, the Sparknotes professional edition of that show in particular, only with more graphics and a, a real-time reaction and less SDA, unfortunately. So let's get into it. In 2009, the Dutch made the mistake of allowing Tom Six to write, direct, and and co-produce the story of a German surgeon. Because of course, it's gotta be the German surgeon who kidnaps three tourists with the purpose of procedurally conjoining the three individuals mouth to anus to create a human centipede. Roll credits. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I wish it were over that quickly, ladies and gentlemen, but that's 285 agonizing minutes of my life that I'll never get back. And goddammit, if I don't milk this for all it's worth, it would have been for nothing. The note taking, the close calls where I almost vomited into my garbage can, the unrelenting gagging. I will never eat again, I swear. Never. Anyway, in concert with most ideas that come about as a result of heavy drinking and late night friendship conversations that should be relegated to never ever seeing the light of day, the concept of a human centipede comes from the hypothetical that Tom Six proposed to a friend one night when joking about punishing child molesters by sticking his mouth to the anus of a, a fat truck driver, which is rude. Uh, what did the truck driver do to deserve such a horrific fate? How would you come to such a point in a conversation is beyond me, but the idea of punishing criminals in such a way is an idea that Tom Six does eventually return to in the third movie. But we're not there yet, trust me. Furthermore, because this is exactly where you would expect it to come from. The inspiration for this film is derived from a World War II Nazi named Joseph Mengele, who conducted experiments at Auschwitz. He was an SS agent who took a particular interest in twins and individuals with abnormalities. As a matter of fact, one of his experiments revolved around the idea of sewing together two Romani twins in an attempt to create conjoined twins. Said twins unsurprisingly died of gangrene a few days later, but Joseph was such a piece of work that he eventually was granted the nickname the Angel of Death, because I mean, honestly. Tom Six, if you're gonna dig yourself a grave, why stop at six feet, am I right? Just, just keep digging. Report. Given the inspiration for the concept of the human centipede, one can hardly be surprised by what we got. Although, I'll, I'll say this, Six's investors can say that they were in fact surprised by the concept of the first movie due to the fact that Six conveniently left out the ass-to-mouth part of the concept while seeking financial backing for his film until way late in the game when the film was already completed. I would have loved to hear the pitch line for this entire movie and the entire franchise, honestly. How do you pitch a movie that's entire concept is based around the concept of human sewn mouth to anus without mentioning the mouth to anus bit of the concept? Well played, sir. Well played. Much of the promotion for this film claimed it to be 100% medically accurate, and that's a direct quote from the director, by the way. In what sense was it medically accurate? I have no fucking clue. I'm not a doctor, nor was I Tom Six at any point in my life, and I'm good with that, honestly. But it is, apparently. The Human Centipede trilogy places itself on a sliding scale, with the first movie propping itself up as a proper horror gore flick, following all of the cliches with its own obvious twists, of course, but um, the rest of the franchise is honestly a steep slow into the pits of hell. The formula goes as such. Dumbass bimbos get stranded in rural area. Dumbass bimbos get lost in rural area trying to seek help. Dumbass bimbos approach seemingly inconspicuous 
like he was dwelling in middle of woods and seek help from the owner of said dwelling. Dumbass bimbos get themselves kidnapped and revolves around said groundbreaking gimmick, summed up on the cover of the movie box that it comes in. It's rather formulaic, I'll say that. As far as horror movies go, it does its job well when it comes to being horrific, sickening, and downright unsettling. It's by no means sub Versive, as the film ends with the only character we care about, or are supposed to care about, being left in the precarious position of no longer having a direct threat posed to her, while at the same time being left alone between the front and caboose of her, um, system. Her fate left eerily ambiguous, which was effective in that it leaves you with an unsettling pit in your stomach afterwards. It's impactful in that the movie doesn't quite leave you alone after the credits roll, and not just because the concept is gross and unsettling, but because of the fact that the character character is kind of in a coin toss of a situation. All things considered, while others might be surprised, it scored as well as it did. I'm not surprised that it received a 50% on Rotten Tomatoes, beating out much more, more wholesome, friendly <laughs> content, such as the Avatar, the last Airbender movie, you know, the one that M. Night Shyamalan botched, and, and it even beat out 2004's Saw movie by at least 1% of a Rotten Tomato point. One human centipede movie would have fulfilled its purpose as a cultural shock phenomenon. That would have been enough, but in keeping tradition with the film industry's incestuous need to annoyingly take a concept with a modicum of success and ram it into the ground. We can't just have one movie. We have to have more. Three, to be precise. So in 2011, Tom decided that the audiences had had a long enough break from the brainchild of his most depraved fantasies and sat his happy ass down in front of the typewriter to write a second Human Centipede movie. But this wouldn't be like the last Human Centipede. Oh no. Core concept aside, the film would be so much more of a, um, shit show. The first reason why it's not the same film as the last one is that this film breaks the reality of the original film in that it acknowledges the first film as a film and stages that as the inspiration behind the events taking place in the second film, acknowledging the possible real-world ramifications of creating such debaucherous content, while simultaneously engaging tenfold exactly in what the second film is examining in the first film. The second reason it's not the same film as the last one is, when I say this film is tenfold what the first one was meant to be, uh, I mean it. The first film was surgical and exact in its nature, deliberate and intentional, with a clear, concise story to tell. This one, however, was nauseatingly blown to new proportions, essentially no holds barred. The promotion for this film was 100% medically inaccurate, and it delivers on that in every way. The film spends the entirety of its runtime being uncomfortably disgusting for the sake of being uncomfortably disgusting, gory for the sake of shocking its audience, and dare I say it, unnecessary. It flirts with an extremist phenomenon constantly, but why, you may be asking. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's because Tom Six wanted to give the audience all of the, quote, blood and shit that they didn't get from the first film. However, it should be noted that it wasn't the blood and shit in the first film that made said film such a cultural phenomenon. It was the concept behind the film, the execution of said concept, and the ambiguity that earned it its spot in pop culture halls of infamy. The second film didn't perform as well as its predecessor, with a score of 29%, because it lacks an understanding of those single core fundamentals. The third reason it's not the same film as the last one is that it's it's in black and white, which given the excessively gory nature of the film is a small blessing because it diminishes just how horrific the film actually was in the viewing of it. I'm not kidding. You can't tell the difference between what's blood, what's dirt, and what's um, the fecal matter. <laughs> small blessings, people, small blessings. The reality of these films is that the whole concept of each movie does in fact revolve around one single thing, the ass to mouth idea. The first movie at least has an understanding of how to use a plot arc in the sense that it develops that idea to its logical conclusion. However, the second film is 84 to 91 minutes of pitiful, grotesque, deplorable depravity for the sake of such. And it doesn't need to be, because one movie would have been enough, guys. Which brings us to the final sequence, which sees the return of our favorite angry German from the first movie, Dieter Lasser as Bill Boss, completely new character, and the warden of a prison. And then we have our favorite mentally stunted, bulging marshmallow of a man, Lawrence R. Harvey, from the second movie, as Boss's accountant, Dwight Butler. And utilizing this procedure, this concept of ass-to-mouth as, as a punishment and behavioral control for 
for criminals in the system. This film was the least well-received of its trilogy by its audience, with an abysmal 18% on Rotten Tomatoes. But the question is why it received such a low score from its audience, even the ones that might be into this kind of nonsense. Well, while the second film was still extreme in the nature at the way that it approached the concept of the human centipede, it was still mostly grounded in a reality that the audience could believe was possible. The third film, however, suspended all notion of realism in favor of an absurdist, satirical approach to the concept, with a take on prison reform to its own detriment, mind you. In translation, this film was a bad film, but not for why you think it was. I want to be clear, it's not the fault of the absurdism or the satire that makes this film the worst in this entire trilogy, it's how these concepts were executed. I could sum up the entire movie with just about 10 simple words. Angry German man does angry German man things on camera. It's as if Six told Lasser to take all of the drugs for filming days and then let him loose and didn't tell Harvey that that was what was going on. But because Six never yelled cut, Harvey had no choice but to go along with this shit show. That was every single scene. Get to races! Did you hear me? And that is the whole movie, essentially. It's not clever, and it is far from original. Not even joking. I mean, Eddie Goldberger, who put it best in his review of the movie, said, quote, the movie passes time until it can get to the centipeding. Even the big namesake event, when it finally arrives, is ho-hum. Turns out, whether it's three people stuck together or 500, if you've seen one human centipede, you've seen them all. It, it, basically, that's exactly what it is. Which is something the movie is hyper aware of, I'm not gonna lie, given the fact that the human centipede part of said human centipede three is featured less than five minutes in the entire film. I'm not even kidding. I went back and I timed it. That's how petty I am. Hey, you in the audience, do you have any fan fiction, movies, books, or other mediums of media that you'd like for me to suffer through? Let me know using the comments section and or using one of my many links in the description that can be found down below. <laughs> oh, God, it's on the camera.